Welcome to the Open University Stable Isotope Facility. Now I'm here to find out how we analyse for the stable isotopes of carbon, nitrogen and hydrogen. This laboratory runs a stable isotope mass spectrometer, a Finnegan MAT 253. Now this is capable of analysing the isotopes of carbon, hydrogen and nitrogen of a number of materials. And it can do this in two ways because there's two separate inlets into the system. Now the first one is this elemental analyzer. Now this can analyze bulk samples of carbon and nitrogen through combustion or hydrogen through pyrolysis. And over here we have a gas chromatograph that allows you to get the carbon isotope compositions of a range of organic compounds individually, which is quite special. So what exactly do you need in terms of your samples? Well, the first thing to do is to contact the Open University to see if your samples are feasible and particularly if you're worried about the size of sample that you need. Now, let's first look at the elemental analyzer because this is the most common way in which you're going to analyze your isotopes. The samples are weighed and loaded into tin capsules ready for analysis. But how much sample? If you're interested in obtaining both carbon and nitrogen isotope values, then it's important to realize that you will need significantly more sample as the isotope nitrogen-15 is significantly less abundant relative to nitrogen-14 than carbon-13 is relative to carbon-12. How much sample? Well, that depends on the carbon and nitrogen content. A good rule of thumb would be to ensure that after your sample is prepared, it contains around 100 micrograms of carbon. The final capsules are then loaded into this carousel along with empty tin capsules and tin capsules containing international standards. Now these are dropped automatically into the combustion and reduction chamber of the elemental analyzer where carbon is combusted to carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxides reduced to nitrogen gas. Bulk analysis using the elemental analyzer is useful for a number of samples like crushed meteorites or laboratory analogues. But if your organic compounds can be separated by solvents, it may be possible to identify the carbon isotopes of each individual organic compound. Now that separation can be done using this gas chromatograph and it's known as compound specific isotope analysis, a technique that was pioneered for meteorites here by Professor Ian Gilmore. So what are the requirements for this specific type of analysis? Well, the first may be fairly obvious. You need to check that your compounds can be separated by this capillary column. Now, not all compounds can be separated by gas chromatographic columns, and so it's important that you check with the Open University before you come that your samples are suitable for this type of analysis. The second important requirement is that your individual compounds can be cleanly separated. That is that each chromatographic peak can be clearly separated from the others so you don't get an average of compounds in your analysis. When it comes to making the actual analysis, the procedure is very similar to conventional gas chromatography. The difference being that prior to entering the gas mass spectrometer, the compounds are looting from the gas chromatographic column are combusted to carbon dioxide and water. The water is then removed prior to the pure CO2 entering the mass spectrometer. Now it's important to remember that this type of analysis won't be able to determine your type of organic compound. It will merely give you the isotopic signature of it. So to determine what compounds you're actually analyzing on the machine, you'll need to use one of these, a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer before your isotope analysis. Compound-specific isotope analysis is a very powerful technique that's capable of providing insights into the mechanisms and processes of the formation of organic compounds. But remember, good data is paramount, and so preparation is the key. And if you've got any questions, please get in touch with the people at the labs first before coming. If you want to apply to use this facility, follow the links on the websites. Remember, this is one of several facilities available for Europlanet, so why not take advantage of it?